Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! All right, everybody, check this out. I just got a package from Tony's Train Exchange, and I just took a moment to cover up all the particulars. And I uh, am, this thing is really heavy. So it must be Atherin Genesis DD40AX. It's all I can think of. This is really, really heavy. All right, let's see here. Right, let's get this picked up. Walk this across the room. Oh, sh Okay, yep, it's really heavy. No doubt about it. It's probably not the heaviest. Maybe I've had a few brass hybrid locomotives or something like that that at least approaches it, but it's it's definitely pretty substantial. Let's take a quick look at all the features. It's run by a Tsunami 2 sound decoder, and if you look, there should be a fair number of layers of beacon on top, and I have a separate video about that beacon. There's general service sequence on F18. I don't know what that is, but we'll give it a try. Looks like a lot of the things that are normally on F5 and F6 have been remapped to 28 and 29 so they could replace them with the lighting functions. Get this out of the, uh, what is that? It's a detail pack. There are two things in it. I have no idea what those are and I probably won't even bother to find out. All right, let's get the, you know what? This thing is so heavy. It's it's easier just to go ahead and put it down and to do a walk around of it there. So let's let's do that. This is probably one of Atherin's flagship products, and uh, looking at it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, there are a lot of fine details here, and you know, just look. I mean, it looks to me like you could almost walk up on this and um, start it up. Yep, uh, I mean, look, I mean, it looks like it has the um, actual black, I guess these are going to be the O-rings that seal the windows in that, um, so that you could actually break them out if necessary. Uh, look, it even looks like it has a roll-down shade over the window. I mean, really, really detailed. They put a lot of time into this, obviously, and of course, what's great, of course, is this is in existence. I could go, I guess, take this when I go look at this thing in real life, and, you know, I'm sure they did too, and everything here i mean just exquisite truck details um i mean they actually looked like they're made out of cast iron and painted i mean i'm really impressed the printing is very crisp um here's the gm builder's plate looks great on it um i can't get any closer to this with the camera but i'm pretty sure um, even the text is readable yeah definitely they wanted this product to look great and i guess they support I guess they sort of have to, right? I mean, it's huge. Yeah, here's your sanding tubes. It's huge, and, you know, people are going to be able to see these kinds of details. It, it almost approaches an O-scale um, type of locomotive in a way. I kind of noticed that the metal grating here is popping up a little bit, though. I'm not quite sure. I don't know if I can push that back in or not. Uh, I'll have to give it a try here, and, and if I can't, maybe I'll have to... Maybe I'll have to a little bit of glue on it or something like that to hold it down as much as I don't want to do that. All right, so, well, either way, I'll, I'll figure that out, I guess, or maybe I'll just leave it for now. It's, it's not bothering me, so, um, all right, let's go on the top. Yep, separately applied fans. That's really nice, although on a model this big, you could actually have working fans. Also on a model this big, I, theoretically, you could actually have working smoke units on the two exhaust ports as well. I think, you know, they've just about maxed out the you know the look of this locomotive and if they're going to want to do anything to it in the future they're going to have to put in those kinds of interesting tidbits yeah then we look even has this nice cap i assume this is the sanding reservoir right um it it's, looks nice i mean it looks like you could just go in there and pop it up and open it and dump some sand in there if you wanted to all right here's another notice i mean there's some separation down um between the actual um, walkway and the shell. So it's not too noticeable, right? I mean, I'm pretty close up to it, but it is a bit of a flaw. And I think because this is so large, any kind of flaw like that is gonna be exacerbated visually a little bit. All right, you can see in the metal tipped hoses and this this all came, it's only those two things that were in a detail pack. I'm not entirely sure what those were. I probably should bother to go read the manual. It's, um, 
here's the coupler. It's kind of, uh, it's one of those standard arm whisker couplers that has a nice spring, but there is a problem with this that I'll bring up a little bit later. I even noticed that it has the paint over what used to be railroad, I'm pretty sure. I'm not actually sure why Union Pacific did that, but I assume that's the way the real one looks, so um, it's a nice little touch. Just to warn you, even though these fuel filler caps look huge, I, I tried it, you still cannot get a fuel nozzle in there, so don't try it. Just take my word, a fuel nozzle isn't going to get in there. Here's one of the features that this particular locomotive is known for. It's this walkway and it's right. I have, you know, the older Atherin Blue Box DD40 and of course you can see all of the motor workings in there, but this one you can see straight through just like in the real version. So it looks great. It's certainly one of the more detailed models in my flotilla. All right, let's put this chunker on the scale, plop it down, and after, let's see, one pound, nine ounce, it's not quite two pounds, I'll reset it, make sure that I got a good reading here, and it looks like I did. So that is going to equal 733 grams and uh, 25, 26 ounces, so it's pretty chunky. It does not have traction tires, so it has to rely on adhesion for all of its traction. So this is the front coupler. It looks a little high, not very high, but a little bit high. But, I, you know, is it really going to make a difference? I'm not sure, at least not to me, because I'm not going to lash another locomotive or anything onto the front of this. But it may matter to you. As far as the rear coupler, that one seems dead on. So, yeah, that one's more important to me. I'm not sure why the front one's just a little bit raised, but this one looks pretty much dead on. One thing I think would have helped though is having a close coupling mechanism. And the reason why is because the overhang on this rear section is kind of severe at times and it can really pull on the car and come decoupled if the tail end swings out, particularly if it swings out quickly, if you go into a turn rather quickly. So I think this is one area of, you know, you can use some improvement by having a close coupling mechanism that allows the coupler to kind of bend out and away from the coupler mount a little bit. So that was the overhang on my 33.3 inch curves. Here it is on my second oval. These are 28 inches. So you can see now right at the front and the back are starting to protrude a pretty fair amount, but it will cut around this curve um, and it doesn't look quite as super ridiculous as maybe as it could, but uh, we can take the, you know, take this up one notch and put it on the 26 inch curve. As you can see, trying to keep anything coupled with <laughs> this kind of overhang is going to become more and more difficult. It's still possible, but boy, it's going to be really tough if you have a car mounted coupler, uh, any kind of coupler actually. All right, let's take this ridiculousness to an extreme and go with my 22 to 23 inch curves. I just don't think this is going <laughs> to be possible. You can run the locomotive around it, but I don't think you're going to be able to keep a consist coupled to it at all. All right, this is slow speed. This is just with the thing out of one out of 128. And as you can see, it has a tsunami too. So slow speed control isn't great. It runs pretty quick. Now I haven't messed with the controller at all, so I could probably get this to slow down some, but out of the box, it runs kind of fast. And you may or may not care about this, but certainly if they would have used lock sound, they would have had better low speed control for sure. One thing you may not notice, but I noticed, but if you look closely at my videos, you may notice there is actually a lot of gear slop in this model, quite a bit actually. And because of that, it, even at low speed, it can kind of jerk a little bit when you start it up. And I think that also contributes to this being a little bit noisier than I would generally expect. So yeah, I mean, it, it's, again, it's hard for you to see, but I see it really easily. Even though I think it should be a standard feature on high-end models, this model does not have a capacitor. As you can see, as soon as I cut track power, the flywheels just roll it to a stop. Also, this exhibits standard tsunami behavior where you can just run it as much as you want even before the engine is started up. Um, it's something, again, that lock sound is quite superior on. And of course, you can turn that feature off in lock sound if you want to pair, you know, um, locomotives together or something like that. But here again is a lock sound controlled unit. After you turn on the engine, you can crank the throttle all the way up, but it won't go until it's actually spooled up and ready.
Oops, it's still derailed there. Oh, well. I'm going to let this run by without any sound. But again, I, I think the amount of um, slop in the gears makes it a little bit noisier than I'd like. All right, let's uh, run through the lighting functions for you. When you turn it on, actually, the number board and the, hey, what are these, the engineer's lights or the low speed lights or whatever come on automatically. F5 will get you the beacon, but it won't look like this. I've modified mine, I have a separate video about that. Here's what the headlights look like. F24 will get you the class lights up front. There they are, if you can't see them. And then F25 will get you the rear marking lights, the rear class lights, I guess. Here's what the reversing lights look like. So and I think that's pretty much all of them. Let me run you through the sound features. I'm gonna bring a westbounder up to number one track there. Uh, stay in the clear until uh, talk to me over.
All right, let's slap a consist down for this thing. I've been waiting a long time to use this. I don't have any UP pulling equipment, so uh, this should be pretty interesting. That should be enough cars. I'm curious to know how, how much all of this is going to weigh. Let's find out. Let's, let's get this thing going and plop these down. I won't worry too much about the box lid. It just It's going to be pretty negligible compared to all, to all of these. So let's see what we have here. It should be pretty substantial. 5.8. So I think if this thing pulls 5.8 pounds of these cars, then we'll be in really good shape. I ran this in for about an hour, so we should be fine. So let me go ahead and just couple four though to it just to make sure, you know, maybe I'll hear something weird. You just, just want to make sure it can pull four. Not a problema on four, so let's add four more and see what we get from this thing. I think we're still well within its capabilities. Okay, well, those are new cars, and I don't want to take the time to debug them. These Walther's cars, any cars, but these Walther's one in particular can take a long time. They can take days, particularly with a consist this long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to string a bunch of passenger cars together that are exactly the same weight. It doesn't mean they're going to have the same rolling resistance, because a lot of times Walther's cars have little bit sticky wheels, but... Um, We'll get kind of close here, I'm pretty sure. And hey, how many locomotives can pull almost six pounds worth of cars? Oh, that's just a little bit over. I think if we just pull one or two of these out, we'll have 5.8. Let's just pull out one and see what we get. Hopefully that'll be pretty close. And yep, winner, winner, chicken dinner. We got 5.8, so let's go ahead and stack these on. I'll just do what, a four, six, I'll, I'll do a few at a time here to make sure this works. Alrighty, that's perfect. Let's go ahead. I should be able to actually finish this. Let's go ahead and add on a bunch more, if not all of them, and see how this goes. Whoops, one of the cars was that one wheel off. So let me fix that and I'll get this thing going on its way. And let's see if it pulls around my entire um, U-shaped curve.
that was all but two, all but two of them. So I should be over five pounds now. Should be, yeah, over, over it. So I'm gonna have to pull this consist up just a little bit further so I can get these last two onto the straight. Okay, so what started happening here is that the consist was so heavy that if there was any kind of coupler disagreement at all, the consist would break. The locomotive had no problems pulling it. It did have some wheel slip, particularly if I started it slowly on the curve, but I can't blame it for that. So overall, this thing can pull probably more than six pounds worth of cars without any problems. So overall, it's hard not to like this model. It's certainly a very detailed model and um, it pulls a lot. So how can you not want that? I think the next iteration of this though, I'd like to see them fix some of the problems, particularly the amount of gear slop there is. There's a lot of gear slop and it makes this thing kind of lurchy. As a whole, I wish Tsunami would fix some of their low speed issues. And also I wish it would give you the option of waiting for the motor to spool up before it will start to run. Also, I think the model will just be more usable and more forgiving if the rear coupler in particular had some sort of close coupling mechanism where when you went around the curve, it wouldn't swing the coupler so far out. Also, I think in the next iteration, I'd, yeah, I think this would be a great time for them to try to add some new features like um, rotating fans or even smoke units. <laughs> smoke units that don't melt the entire body, that is. So when I get these passenger cars debugged, I'll have a running session only for you. But until then, hey, let me know what you think and please like and uh, comment and subscribe. And I really appreciate your viewership. And until next time, hey, happy model railroading. Take care and I'll catch you later.